are we on the air today? Yes, we are. Because that is the name of the show. Welcome, I am Sam Delevin. This is our Children of Airte after show where we ensure our heroes have gotten fully potty or now we certified before they go scuba da- Oh no, wait, we are the children of YOLO. We're gonna go say hi to an octopus and with me tonight, leading that greeting party are my guests, Lauren and Hope, because until you have done 100 dives, you should always go with a buddy. So thank you both for joining me. Please introduce yourself, starting with Hope. Hello, everybody. My name is Hope Lavelle. You can follow me on Twitter at the Hope Lavelle. Um, there, I, int I introduced myself. That was it. <laughs> it was beautiful. There you have it. Lauren? I, it was so short, and it was so to the point, and, <laughs> and now I'm just stymied. Hi, I'm Lauren Urban. I'm the content coordinator over at Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms. You can find me on the socials as Oboe Lauren. Done. <laughs> we have Brevity, the soul of wit. We have Lauren, the soul of Oboe, and, um, hi. But before we and dive- And Sam, the soul of awesome. <laughs> oh, how could you? I, I, that's what I'm here for, is throwing compliments at people when they least <laughs> expect it. <laughs> Boom, take that. <laughs> well, I will certainly fail my deck save unless and until I mention our sponsors. Hmm. Idle Champions of Forgotten Realms, we're giving away codes. So you can type and code in chat for a free Electrum chest in game. Die Hard Dice, purveyor of clicky clacky math rocks, ideal for distracting the giant octopodes in your life. Use code AIRTE at checkout for a 10% discount. Doing a giveaway in chat and Sirenscape because epic games require epic music. And with those pre-dive checklist items out of the way, on with our show and a reminder, you too can ask our guests questions like, how do I get a safety seal, seal of approval, by asking your question with question in all caps in chat. But of course, I have unsealed the first questions myself and so will ask. Neb, you are a fantastic seal. Thank you. You are such a, such a good seal. Um, but Lauren, how do you choose among all the marine animals in the whole wide sea and all of the animals you can yet be? You became a seal. Can you just, can we just start off? Just tell me about being seal. Well, in that moment when she needed to turn into something, in all of the moments in where Neb needs to turn into something on the fly and there's not an easy answer, what I try to think of is, okay, what does she have experience with or, you know, practically recently has studied, you know, so what makes sense in that moment? I do also have a list of animals that I have stat blocks for, you know, I'm trying to be prepared. So it's kind of a mixture of that. And so in that moment, um, I think I'd, I'd actually asked Deb, okay, what do I remember from the book that I was studying of marine life? And she she mentioned two or three creatures and one or two of them were, I, I just knew way out of her league, but then she said seal. And I'm like, well, okay, that's perfect. She's gotta be a seal. That's, it's cute. It's adorable. It's it's a low CR. So yeah, it, it's all of the things that would work um, for, for Neb. But yeah, in those frantic moments, it's always kind of a balance of what makes sense in the situation and what would she actually know? So what do you think brought Seal to mind for Neb? Like, did she, was she an aquarium visitor or, or just She's a probably... fan of Zubaborns? I think she's probably visited the New York Aquarium at one point, but I I do think in that moment, it was a probably a mental flip through of either the animal book that she has, or when we were at the top of that ridge, there were those plaques talking about all the different animals that were on, that were in this area. And as much as a Greenland shark is awesome, eh, that's a little complicated. So I think seal was probably... <laughs> I, I made the joke that it's it's going to look cartoonish because all she has is the outline in her head, <laughs> which I think Alicia took uh, too literally. It was like, is, yeah. does she have googly eyes? <laughs> and, then, and then I felt bad. And then I'm like, oh, maybe she could have googly eyes. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Hope, help me. I'm a big <laughs> druid. Can I have googly eyes as an animal? You absolutely can. Yes. <laughs> 
Penelope is here on Alan Nierte. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Googly eyes permitted. But yeah, I do try to stick with um, what does she have any kind of reasonable experience with. Uh, and so that, that's why I was so happy to get that book because it expanded her knowledge quite a bit. <laughs> And the available stat blocks, one mm-hmm. presumes. We were talking a little bit about getting pre-show advice of how to druid. So any any uh, hot tips, Hope? Okay, if you don't know how, if you, you can't picture an animal perfectly, you get out your crayons, you get out your paper, and you just doodle it. You know, you just do your, your best that you can, and, and you're good to go. Whatever you draw, you can okay. you can do. <laughs> I'm making notes. Make doodles. Make doodles. <laughs> she does have that whole notebook. She will she will practice and and at the moment the only thing that's in that notebook, it's one of the few things that's in the notebook. Uh, one of her brothers drew um, a squirrel in there because she's supposed to be practicing her her drawing skills on this excursion so instead she's just using the paper to start fires and stuff and she's just ripping paper out of that book and i'm like no don't do that (laughs) that's gonna last us a long time yeah yeah but we needed a fire starter so uh, (laughs) paper look we can't i hope we can't interfere with arson (laughs) arson's gonna arse but besides we also have mending yes finally have you been waiting for this one? So much, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Having mending is just, it all started with the boot. And the boot went, I was like, I have to be able to mend this. I'm not getting rid of my boots. So this entire time, ever since the icky icker that we had to go up against that ate the boot, my beautiful yellow rain boot, um, I just picture like she's got these really Robin has these really comfy socks. They're like wool socks. So they're pretty thick. But I just picture the little toe, like the little wool sock toe just sticking out of the little hole that was in this rain boot. She's not taking them off. And then I was like, well, if we're gonna tread water, it's gonna it's just gonna be a big mess. And then it was because I fell into the water. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I mean, I already think of Robin as pretty chill. You did not have to augment <laughs> that situation. <laughs> but now it, we know mechanically that if you are from uh minnesota you will get advantage on that roll <laughs> mm-hmm. that so funny mm-hmm. uh, you get so cold you turn minnesotan i love that this game re- really rewards some of the utility spells that a lot of other D games just take for granted like like mending i've had characters have had it before and it turns into one of those like oh, i'll just mend that or press a digitation or something like that but that moment of like i can fix the boot she can fix the boot that was so that <laughs> was like an emotional moment <laughs> did it feel like a payoff for you hope after all of these episodes of of holy boots you have no idea because like every single episode i would be looking over my list of all the things that are in my bag and i'm like what if i use duct tape uh what if i use band-aids i don't know i'll put a baggie over it and and like i'm thinking of all these things i could do to save my boot and then it didn't even occur to me until we leveled that i was like i can have mending now (laughs) and it's the perfect spell for robin it is yeah you know if you think about it like her jobs you know she's she's been assistance on so many things she can she can weld she can uh she's a tailor's assistant she can you know she can do all these little handy things so it makes sense that you can you know uh you can kind of write it into the story that she knows how to mend things it's just now it's done a little more magically like she might not need a welding uh machine to be able to put the train tracks back together she can just do it with her her magic instead but she still knows the skill of how to do it so you know that can kind of play into it it's like it still takes the knowledge but uh, now you instead of a tool you can just use your magic i wonder if that will influence the scope of what mending can do we were talking a little bit about like how far we can push robin's mending Mm -hmm. maybe it's what robin knows how to mend I like that because yeah I I think Neb has three billion ideas what you should try and it's a lot of me as Lauren forgetting 
the rules because I know what mending is supposed to do. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, I'll just say it. The first chance Neb gets, can you mend Steve? And that's just it. It's like, I knew that would be the first thing when I got mending, people would be like, you gotta, you gotta mend Steve. And I'm like, it just doesn't work that way. You know, like I suppose over time, you know, a little piece here, a little piece there. Um, I want to start with the, I will fix the clocks. I will, they'll stop uh, the, um, oh God, word. Oh, the pocket watches. The pocket watches. Oh. Um, so we'd at least have that. I think I could mend those. But as far as mending the rubble that is Steve, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's going to be, that's going to be an interesting thing. Look, in fairness, we were all thinking it. Mm -hmm. uh, Cassius was thinking how long anyone think mending spam would take to put the body back together? It it comes to mind because it was such a sad moment. Yeah. You know, it is a cantrip. You can't just keep doing it, you know. It's mm -hmm. But it's, you know, story-wise, I'm saying it's not possible because I know it was time to let Steve go. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully we will, we will find our justice slash possibly vengeance for Steve. Yeah. Both. Yeah. Ooh. His his death will not be in vain because you know we I mean he saved us he you know he, he, he... We don't even know his real name oh gosh don't even say it I, I can't <laughs> help it I can't help it it's so like, bad it's, so I mean it's I have also thought let me back that sentence up I 100% agree with you hope that like dramatically and story wise that was an amazing moment and I wouldn't want uh, to bring back that person in a non awesome way because of that but that is a creature with the soul of someone who is connected to ivy and who knows where that person has gone so i we might have lost steve the the robot <laughs> stone statue. <laughs> statue thing but we might not have lost that person that's a good point i mean deal think that Deborah would put Steve in a position to get wrecked if he is ultimately an essential NPC, so to speak? Yeah, it's, it's possible that we have not seen the last of Steve and that he will come back in another form, possibly at 2.13 in the morning. I mean, like, you don't know. It's, yeah. That's, you know. I also... One of the beautiful things about Deborah's puzzles is how open she is to alternate ideas of how to solve them mm -hmm. and alternate paths to get to the same point. And so it wouldn't surprise me if all of that was not planned. It was just what made sense in the moment and what those characters would do and crafting an amazing moment. And then she'll she'll make it work. <laughs> you know, she'll just make things work. So that's that's half the fun of this this adventure is we could break the 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 stuff if we really need to you know we could break the the puzzles after all robin has mending <laughs> there you go done <laughs> story mending let's go <laughs> that's next level i love it narrative mending ooh well, that's an, that's that it has to cost some spell slots, though. I don't think narrative mending comes from Ninth free. level spell. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. that's called wish, right? Right. <laughs> but it's the version of wish, wish that's not the, well, and then everything goes bad, right? Yes, it's the, the without consequences. It's the opposite of wish. It's the, uh, mm -hmm. I don't it's know. It's divine intervention, except yes. you're praying to one of the gods of knowledge and storytelling. The one DM. <laughs> yes, yes, you're, you're praying, praying to, to you, Deborah Ann Wall and saying, please let me fix this. <laughs> please, Deborah Ann Wall, give Steve. <laughs> we actually had a question from socials from Fallen Angel asking our guests if they'd be willing to speculate on whom they think Steve is. Did y'all have any notion or is it still completely mysterious to y'all? I have my thoughts. What do you, what do you think? You go first, Lauren. Uh, so I don't know specifically. It, there is some kind of love triangle going on. 
there is between Ivy and um, I don't remember the other gentleman's name, but whatever that dark creature is and Steve and the real Steve, you know, the, the person who actually made Steve's mind. We're assuming that the the creature who is a family member of Ivy's is Steve, but there could they could be two different creatures. But I really do think we're we're untangling a weird love story and there has been betrayal and dark magics and awful things that have happened. And I, I don't know specifics of who, I don't think we know enough about who betrayed who, but this is, this is romance gone bad. I think, um, I think our statue, Steve, uh, I kind of think of it being kind of like the princess bride where, you know, he's like, he was like the stable boy, who fell in love with the princess that, you know, is Ivy or whatever. And they fell in love, but, or maybe it wasn't reciprocated, you know, so he would die for her, but maybe she doesn't feel the same way. So literally it's pretty much what happened. He would, he died for her. And, <laughs> but that was Julian. Kind of, Julian. Yeah. Sorry. That was the other name I was trying to remember. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do wonder if, because we know that at one point the the train basically did exactly what it did with us, except a long time ago and where it went off and suddenly everybody just disappeared off the train. And I wonder, Hope, if your idea of, you know, these two people who were in love, but they couldn't get married because of family station or previous obligations, and they tried to run away on the train and dark and evil, scary creature stopped it from happening. And that's why magic things are going on. Interesting. Yeah. We also know that at least Ivy thinks that fixing this is not just going to save her, but she said, uh, like other worlds. She mentioned all the worlds. So there's, there's something real nasty going on. It's not <laughs> just saving one, one poor person in a mirror. Yeah, we have confirmed at least two worlds, and we have confirmed what an Erte is. <laughs> I appreciate you all. I appreciate y'all's commitment to the goof. <laughs> it is a beautiful, beautiful thing to witness. <laughs> My favorite thing is coming up with alternate spellings for it now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you brought us problems. So if anyone could find <laughs> ideal alternate spellings. <laughs> ideal i don't know fun maybe i think i cannot even think about problems without thinking about problems anymore problems problems, you problems. make a beautiful meme one problem <laughs> at a time <laughs> i mean you could just take away all of the the vowels in erte and you just end up with ert, ert. ert. children of I ert mean, in this economy who can afford to buy a vowel <laughs> oh, <not> me. <laughs> yeah. See, there we go. But I like hope I like your speculation. Can we live in the the beautiful, slightly tragic, romantic world of Hope Lavelle's mind? <laughs> you certainly can if you check out Fantastic Kings and where to find them that she's GMing. Oh my god! It's so good. <laughs> Thank you. What a drop. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh but with with all of that in mind. Do you think there do you think there is something that is going on that's further causing disaster since the ship lit on fire? Like these are causing problems down the line. You pick up a mirror shard, your ship catches fire, right? Maybe. I mean the we're all assuming that the package that the ship picked up is some thing perhaps it's true. the mirror it's speculative. Shard. yeah yeah or maybe the thing that the ship picked up caused the fire and then the the mirror shard was placed there later by mm -hmm. whoever is crafting these these uh story uh these blocks i guess these challenges um i don't know i mean how did the zombies come to be magic I know, right? But like, I hadn't thought of the idea of these disasters not be these disasters being connected somehow, and not just okay. This was the thing that happened in this town that 
Steve or whoever's taking advantage of to craft this challenge for us. But like, I think it's just the power, the power of the magic that came from this being, I think is corrupting the world. And that's kind of how I see it. It's just mm. like, there's a corruption that is just taking over. We have yet to meet anything that seems to be uh, native to this in-between world that is nice. Everything that is <laughs> has been nice has just been creatures that are still available in our world. Hmm. So you might be right about that. Maybe. I mean, I guess that depends whence a Steve? Oh. Um, maybe. Maybe. Or, or the little uh, hummingbird who first led you to him back in the mines. Oh, yeah. Who knows which world that's from. Yeah, that seems true. like a, a magical nice thing. Surely there are some nice things around here. You're right. You're right. We're, we're being too cynical, Lauren. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, you're right. You're right. I, I, I mean, do want, part of me wants, wants Harold the Hummingbird to come back. And a part of me is just like, no, no, because we need to protect Harold at all costs. We <laughs> couldn't protect Steve, who was a giant block of hit points, literally. So, <laughs> yeah, so if Harold comes back, that's it. Like, we just all need to form a protective shell around Harold because I'm not letting that little hummingbird get to go to go to go to anything bad. Interesting choice of words. Which words? <laughs> I won't say. I mean, okay, maybe Harold is a giant block of hit points. That's what I'm gonna believe. <laughs> this is the chonkiest hummingbird ever. Oh, the chonk. Oh, under those flappy, flappy wings is just <laughs> solid muscle. <laughs> Dense as a neutron star, our yes. Harold bird. Yeah, I thought the shell, it was a shell, eggshell thing. The protective shell around Harold. Mm -hmm. I was thinking more people, like we just all continue to, but you know. I was I thinking a different wall. type of shell. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, oh, they could all be seas. true. Uh, but one of the lovely things about Harold the Hummingbird is that Robin will certainly follow, whether good idea or bad. And so, look, at least that way, we have someone else who might allow you some relief, Lauren, in being the first to rush in at all times, in all places, in all circumstances. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> depends on depends on how nice Harold the Hummingbird is. <laughs> I, I I finally understand what it's like to be on the other side of a Penelope. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, uh, because because my my character Penelope was always the head first, act first, think later kind of character, and uh, I I was it was really fun to play. But you know now I understand what it's like to play with that kind of character. <laughs> you were one of three others. It wasn't just you. It yes, was, true. There there was there was a yeah. <laughs> I do try to. Uh, it it happened a bunch with the octopus in where like at one point I said all right Neb's gonna go run to the moon pool, but make sure that like she goes through this one door and then stops and then is like are you coming because I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to leave people behind, you know? Yeah. So I'm trying to, maybe that's something else I have to learn from Hope is that how to be a druid and how to be the uh, act first, think later character that doesn't leave everybody behind. <laughs> I think you're doing a really good job. Yeah. Well, thank you. I'm trying. As, as a player, sort of separate from, Neb, Neb is rushing in, of course, mm -hmm. but we got to see with the airlock and so on. You practically delivered a hand engraved invitation of I am going to act recklessly. Please come with if you would so like. It's a very it's a very courteous player thing to do. Can you talk a little bit, um, both of you perhaps, it seems, about how to be a good reckless player? Because you you do it so you're getting so much practice. Well, hope enabled that awesome moment because uh you had you had robin be like this is a bad idea but if we're gonna do it anyway <laughs> <laughs> like just acknowledging just having robin acknowledge this is a bad idea but i'm still gonna follow you that was <laughs> that was my cue that neb could go run forward so <laughs> i i really appreciated that and for me that's a lot of it is you know do i am i getting cues from the other players that it's okay 
you know, I'm not going to try to cross the river until people are like, well, you should turn into an animal and go, or you should, you know, you should scout on ahead. I'm not going to go running off towards the octopus until, you know, because okay, the original plan, I think just before we knew it was going to the moon pool was we were going to come back inside to the center section and like hunker down. And this close. <laughs> yeah. And if it wasn't for Silas knowing exactly where the octopus was and, and saying so, we would just be hunkered down. So that's at least uh, I feel really grateful that I've got a lot of players that I'm playing with who are giving me those cues. And then it's just me trying to pick up on them. I think uh, for playing a reckless character, um, it, it's important to, as a player, understand the repercussions that is probably going to happen your character might not know what repercussions what consequences are going to play out for what you do but the player should have an idea of okay i really want to do this reckless thing because my character is super reckless and just wants to go in and do stuff and not think about it but i got to make sure that the consequences aren't going to affect my party in such negative ways that it makes the players not have fun yeah I think that's the best way to to preemptively decide when to be careless. Chat, that is a very good takeaway. Note that down for <laughs> real so that you too might do the bad idea. But Hope, now you are in the position, it seems, of enabling the recklessness um, and uh, sending <laughs> the bat signal up. Can you uh, talk about that a little? I wouldn't say I'm enabling. I'm supporting. Hoarding. It's a little different. Really? It depends yeah. on what side of it you're on. Because as far as Neb is concerned, you're enabling. What? How? <laughs> because as how. soon as because as soon as everybody says yes or gives the indication that our you know, it's it's Robin saying this is a bad idea, but I'm gonna go ahead and follow you. I, okay, I got permission. <laughs> I think that comes <laughs> comes down to me being uh, for me as the player. I don't want to hinder you from doing anything you know i want you to do what you want to do so robin is going to find a way she, she might scold you later <laughs> for That's doing one of it, those but... consequences that lauren is prepared for yes <laughs> you know uh, i definitely definitely had like a robin moment of like neb this is probably the dumbest thing you've ever done so far <laughs> but i will be there for you uh -huh. so yeah that's an achievement <laughs> that i just in in the whole cosmology of the various things, Lauren, do you think this is Neb's reckless, most reckless move yet? Do I? Oh, there's so many. <laughs> there's a montage. <laughs> montage. <laughs> dude, dude, dude. It's just like in in loving memory of <gasps> Neb. It's just oh, no! all her reckless things. I mean, it depends on what happens next week. Absolutely, I, this is definitely one of the most. Um, because she at this moment is not thinking that this could go wrong. Like all of her interactions with creatures that she's been able to talk to, animals that she's been able to talk to or turn into, they haven't all been perfect. And some of them are just don't have the capacity to really talk with her, but none of them have been malicious. Like even the wolves, as soon as she started talking to them, the fighting stopped. So for her, it's, it's not that she thinks she's doing anything special. It's, oh, these are all just animals who have instincts like any other animals do. And as long as I can communicate with them, they'll, why would they want to hurt me? You know, why would rats lie? So <laughs> it's, it, you know, for her, it's it's part of that wonder of of everything going on. It's part of her continuing to, enjoy stretching her powers and and then it's a way to talk to a bunch of creatures and get information because if we cannot get killed by this octopus think of what it knows think of this area that it could tell us about as long as we're not turned into lunch that I mean, the potential of octopus intelligence, the risk of, uh, does Nep know how octopodes interact with even their own kind? Oh, no. Broadly? Nope. Cool. You this know, is, this is fine. You know what, you know what's great is, you know, if, if, if Neb gets 
eaten by an octopus. She can still maybe communicate from the inside <laughs> as <laughs> going into the mouth, just like you know, make your octopus sounds and <laughs> you just you just make lots of lots of noises inside of my octopus. I did. That was one of the other moments where Lauren almost stopped Neb because we hadn't had a short rest yet. And I burned my two wild shapes, which are kind of my get out of jail free cards. So that wasn't like Hope was saying, knowing what the consequences are probably going to be and knowing that the two things that I could I can do to potentially get myself out of a really bad situation quickly, I can't do. So that's no get out of jail. No get out of octopus stomach. <laughs> nope. Nope, no turning into something and scurrying away or getting getting loose. She's just got a deal, so we'll see. But narratively, it was big worth because we got to see sparkly glitter Neb. That was, I was so grateful for Deb for helping make that happen. That was so wonderful. Oh, it, it was, was beautiful. beautiful. How did it you was choose cool. that that was the right moment to deploy the glitter sparkle? Well, peeling back the curtain just a tiny little bit, we all had meetings with Deb really recently, kind of at the beginning of the year of like, oh, how are things going with our characters and what are you looking to do and what, you know, where are things headed, where are things going? And I had mentioned, I'd figured the starry form, because we'll just call it that, uh, would come out when she finally gets to see the stars. Because the only time she's gotten that chance, she hadn't leveled up enough yet. And she only saw them for a little bit. So I kind of figured when that happens, because we're all looking for narrative ways for our characters to find our powers, um, narrative reasons why it would it would even instinctually happen. Um, so it's not a spoiler now. I had asked Deb, hey, the next time it's dark, can it be a clear night? And she said, no. <laughs> but I can make something else happen. <laughs> and I went, okay. So Lauren knew to watch out for an opportunity to have something like that happen. So it was, uh, and it was a beautiful moment that she she made. It was absolutely gorgeous. So I'm, I'm very grateful to her and to everybody for letting me have that moment. That was amazing. Oh, I mean, who would ever deny you that? It was beautiful as a scene, and it was beautiful as a Neblorum. <laughs> I, we've had fun enabling each other's powers and joy, and so uh, I felt very blessed to be able to deploy one of the more major things that she can do. So, And I'm always happy to return the favor. <laughs> you think we will be seeing any favors returned in hope? in in robin's direction any anything that you are excited to perhaps reveal or or have we really just peaked at mending because i mean honestly that boot so though wait was that for me yeah, yeah. <laughs> stuff you're the... excited about deploying or uh, as far as uh, as spells and things go yeah abilities i mean absolutely there there are things that I try to tie a lot of Robin's uh, magic to a past. Like, I don't know if I want, I, I'm sure by now everybody's picked up that her photo album isn't quite just a photo album in this world. So, you know, it, on days when she needs to prepare memories, as I like to think, every day she's preparing certain memories. Uh, she's looking through all that book. So she every spell is connected to an experience in her life. So every time I get to, I actually pick my spells based on, oh, would that make a cool story? Like, oh, well, she was a a, a male person once, you know, she was a male delivery person once. And, and that could tie into how this spell is. And so now I have a narrative reason that this spell exists. So um, there, there's a lot of spells that I have stories for that that I'm looking forward to, you know, being able to unveil. That's Pro beautiful. tip GMs, get you a player like Hope. Oh. <laughs> Do it. 10 second. <laughs> but that Which, does, please. Well, I just, I have to ask, what does that mean when Robin is taking pictures now? Like when she's snapping photos as we go, are those, 
those new memories now new spells as well yeah oh, i love it <laughs> I'm looking forward to the moment that we see those like top level spells and it was some picture that you took like 40 episodes ago. You remember was... that 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 picture I took of Neb Seal and Silas walking down the <laughs> <laughs> Well that revealed this power. It was wish. I wish I could see that again. <laughs> <laughs> or or you go the dark route and what what is the picture of Feruza holding a bunch of sticks? Oh. right that's really sad i know it is but it's like that's a gorgeous thing i'm excited now to i want to go and and to every picture that robin has taken i want to go and like find a like a ninth level spell or something that could tie into it you know eventually down the road that'd be good mm, i'm gonna do it <laughs> i was about to say that holding the sticks is uh the grease spell it's a sticky situation no. <laughs> no no grease doesn't even work like that mm. uh, but if you are tying around robin's past we're getting to see more of stuff robin can do which as far as my notes have it, yeah it appears to be everything mm -hmm. um, that's what my notes have confirmed thus far but we get to in very practical terms um add scuba diving as a hobby income do i have that right yes yes she was a scuba diving in instructor mm. at one point so she's she's been a, she's been around in this this type of area um but i have to say when we were in the mines real life hope has had caving experience and knows all sorts of things about caving and what it's really like a real life hope knows absolutely nothing about scuba diving <laughs> Absolutely nothing about the ocean. So um, this one I'm leaning on, you know, Deb a lot. And she's like, don't worry, you know. She 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 asked me, she's like, is 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 Robin uh, scuba certified? And I'm like, she is. And she's like, great. You're going to need that. And I'm like, okay, maybe I should go. Uh, <laughs> maybe I should go study up on scuba diving a little bit. But <laughs> she has you well covered. She does. Though. That, the, she gave fantastic prep. Uh, absolutely great information even the hand signs yeah, yeah. Cool. which by the way are real chat uh those uh -huh. are all official like those are things that you learn yep. in diving <laughs> mm -hmm. even jolly roger yep <laughs> so i mean so, she even gave us exactly six scuba gear bits so that if one of them gets you know destroyed or something we still have well you know what they call the backup regulator in case your primary one fails hmm an octopus really yeah wow. that's actually the name for the backup regulator yeah, that's cool an octopus. do you know why uh i think it's because it looked like an extra little tentacle oh sort of thing hmm. floating off you 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 kind of have it clipped to your to your body and apologies chat we have uh strayed into a domain of nerddom <laughs> um, i'm here for it <laughs> uh but yeah, it'll it'll kind of float and you sweep your arm by your leg and up and around and that way the hose for the for the spare regulator will always come to you. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, there's a little little it's like sweep the leg, but not the leg, the octopus <laughs> leg. The octopus that's coming off you. The octopus named Cusco. Wait now. <laughs> I mean, maybe that means that this octopus is here to save us and we have nothing to worry about. This is all a wonderful metaphor for our experiences in this uh weird world of ours, and we now have a giant amount of help to make up for the giant amount of help with that we've lost. I applaud yeah. your optimism. Chat, do not attempt to use a giant octopus to breathe. That is not how <laughs> scuba diving works, I'm afraid. <laughs> um, but, with, sorry, uh, with all the, the, the less diving experience, my understanding is that it's not a favored domain, Hope. No, <laughs> real life hope is uh, afraid of the ocean, <laughs> but luckily Deb makes it fantastical and she describes it so well that it makes me want to like the ocean, but in real life, Hope's a, a little scared of the ocean. <laughs> in real life, Lauren is right there with hope. Yes. <laughs> really? 
yeah yeah not a fan that is not a place that i ever really want to go I, I i'm not a swimmer don't feel comfortable being in a place with m multiple things that can eat and or kill me at mm -hmm. least in australia i can run in the water i can't i got nothing <laughs> I wouldn't, honestly, I would not have known from either of you with the way that you portray your character's enthusiasm and sense of wonder. I thought, I thought Hope had like a diving background and uh, Lauren is, is just like of the sea. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Uh, that the, the acting challenge will be if and when jellyfish show up because that's my nemesis. That's the reason Lauren doesn't go in the ocean. Gorgeous absolutely wonderful creatures awesome to look at that's uh, yeah man of wars on the on the beach are the reason i don't go in the ocean <laughs> I, it's fair enough and there are certain this is a very lively ecosystem kelp forests very rich mm -hmm. um giant octopus very large um <laughs> so yeah jelly jellyfish may show up and then i get to portray a character that likes them <laughs> That's fun. It's, you know, it's, it's improv. It's, uh, yep. <laughs> it's, uh, just go with it. Here you go, Neb. Go, go like this octopus. I'll be over here. Yeah. <laughs> here you go. Go like this, this jellyfish. I'll be over here. <laughs> I guess we also have to take a second to appreciate Sam's background. Yes. <laughs> Good choice. Oh, yes. I don't know. I thought there was something suspicious. There's something fishy about it. I just couldn't figure out. <laughs> mm. <laughs> The depths Hello. you will go to for a joke. I am beyond <laughs> kelp. <laughs> uh, but not to get too far into the sea weeds, and instead uh, to focus on both of you. Uh, we had some questions, especially since we've talked a bit about uh, leveling up and new powers, and you all recently have had rests and discovered uh, depths within yourselves that um, allow you to mend and so on. Uh, we had one question from That's How We Roll as to whether multiclassing might be in your future. Any any thoughts? I know we can only rest too many spoilers from you, but I'm going to try. This is on the airtay. Mm. I have to make the attempt. Uh, I will say I've actually never multiclassed before. Really? I just I have this thing about wanting to just reach the top, reach the full potential of a class. You know, um, I don't. I. Unless something story-wise happens, I don't see Robin multiclassing. Hmm. And I'm the same way. Uh, in general, I don't multiclass. I do if it's appropriate for the character. Um, I don't see Neb multiclassing unless something happens in the story. And then I'm willing to let her multiclass into anything that makes sense at that moment. But her stats may not support it, but... You know what? That's that's half the fun of the story. So at at this moment, no. But who knows what's around the corner? Are there corners in a in a burp habit? <laughs> that backronym. My goodness yeah. gracious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that we all just like had that moment of burp. Like no one laughed or anything. Everyone's just like, oh yeah, burp. <laughs> yes. This is a reasonable thing that we, reasonable people, are going to, with a straight face, call this location. The burp. And the best thing is, like, academics from multiple reputable research universities all got together to create this facility, right? That's what we know in world? Mm-hmm. They but all looked also... and they were like, you know what's reasonable? Burp. Burp. I mean, I think that's just realism, because when you get a bunch of geeks together, we're, we can nerd out over really, really involved things, but also make those kind of jokes. That That's extremely true. Mm -hmm. It's totally on brand for scientists. I'm here for it. There. We depict real science here. Uh, so, assuming we can navigate... Um, Octopodal diplomacy. Friendship instead of food. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah definitely. Don't say <laughs> no, what once we do that, um, it's out to the wreck. Or 
I saw some intimations that we might see Neb seal, but also that that Neb is very aware of being a prey animal these days. Yeah. Yeah. You think you're definitely. gonna venture out into the ecosystem where there might be sharks? To be honest, at this moment, she would, but her hesitation is she has also realized that a seal needs to breathe. It can just hold its breath for a very long time. So so she will probably either scuba, like with everybody else, especially since hand signals are, are a thing and it's hard to hand signal when you just have flippers. And uh, also do a little bit more studying of, well, what can I turn into down here that's actually going to be advantageous under the sea and nowhere near air? So it's so true. We'll Hello, and please welcome our triumphant return to Under the Water Tay. <laughs> Woohoo! The On the Air Tay after show <laughs> for our Children of Air Tay after show. <laughs> Hi, it's good to have you all back. Thank you. While we were gone, uh, just kind of uh, doggy paddling around, Lauren was talking about aspirations uh, for future experiences that have shaped her perhaps wild shaped her um <laughs> tell us what has added joined to the list what can we look forward to well neb has now seen an octopus <laughs> granted it's a giant octopus but giant she has octopus. seen an octopus so i'm looking forward to the, the, the I've, I've got octopus on the list here but obviously people who know D D enough know that a giant octopus is way out of her league so i'm excited for the moment where that tries to happen Giant octopus, giant octopus. Boop. octopus. <laughs> I do have a couple things on the list that I put on there that are are a hundred percent. She's going to try to turn into like the big version and gets the small version. The small version gets the big version. The this version she gets the that version because you know picturing things in your head is hard. <laughs> That's true. That's true. What I'm going to uh, need is Robin to take a whole bunch of pictures. Uh huh. And then, and then, like, Miss Miss Robin, can I look at your book for a second? I need Aww. to remember what this looks like. She's got plenty of pictures from scuba diving. Might be able to get you something. Ooh. Oh, my <laughs> God, that's amazing. I need to survive next week so we can do that. <laughs> Good. There. There's the goal. Now you are motivated to live. <laughs> now. <laughs> for the sake of underwater photography, you must do this. <laughs> if or you ever want to see this. Which may or may not be a picture that Robin took. You won't know unless mm. and until you survive the larger octopus than you will one day be. Although this octopus is like, that is, that's a, usually giant octopus, not this giant. Usually giant octopus, like a Pacific octopus, smaller than sucker the size of Neb's head, which was Oof. the scale description we have Oof. gotten. That is... And even with Neb reward. being a semi-small person, that's still a really big sucker. Mm. That, that, that's a big sucker. Yeah. Neb doesn't know any better. She's been told it's a giant octopus. This is a giant octopus. Done. <laughs> well, you might yet be a giant octopus, but like, you know, the marine bio kind for the most part. <laughs> a normal sized just... giant octopus. Yes. It's a tiny, tiny little one. Oh, yeah. be cute. Mm -hmm. I just have to survive next week. But then, but then Robin and Neb can sit down and have tea and look through uh, Bear, Great Barrier Reef stories Yay. and pictures. I would love that. <laughs> Those sound absolutely beautiful. Uh, though also, while, while we're speaking of marine creatures, the two of you have committed to an extensive and widely celebrated goof, namely that of the Talosaurus slash Silosaurus. <laughs> <laughs> he is not typically the bastions of the goof the prank which so normally resides with uh our friendly neighborhood troublemaker i mean this, she started this it. is where y'all troll what's great is that robin was once an archaeologist assistant which i think i've dropped before but uh she knows a, a lot about dinosaurs that so she could get she could just hop right in there and be like oh yes of course and you you should see their skeletal shape and the blah 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 and so uh she's she's down to clown mm -hmm. 
And hey, in a rich ecosystem like this, you really might see a prehistoric creature. Yeah. Like a shark. Mm hmm. Also, in a magical world like this, we might see a magical creature. So, for all Neb knows, she's going along with a goof that's just going to turn out to be true. <laughs> It's, it's all goofs and everyone's laughing until there's a Talosaurus uh, mm -hmm. and you're rolling initiative. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's when we're going to want Barry, the giant octopus, as a friend instead of someone who's attacking us. Oh, oh Barry. Steve yeah. brought up a really good point. We're going to probably have to do underwater combat. Probably. That's going to be pretty cool. I mean, we're not going to be able to use certain spells. Unless I use one spell before we go in, and then you'll have this, you'll be able to. Uh huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can see the math happening yes. in that window. Miss Robin has an actual picture of a chalkboard with math <laughs> equations ah. on it. So instead of it all peering around her head, she just looks at that picture. <laughs> she was a physics teacher, so. <laughs> Did we know that? Yeah, a physics substitute teacher. Okay, okay, okay. I remember she's a teacher, but I couldn't remember the, the <laughs> specifics. Episode 14. <laughs> she's a physics teacher and an insurance risk surveyor for three yes. months. There oh my go. god. <laughs> oh, every time you say what occupation. And now, now I don't know whether it's Adam or whether it's Silas. I think it's Silas who's doing it too. It's just like, hobby or profession. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, we got to give a shout out to Fallen Angel, who's really taken the notes. It's, just, it's true. So, Absolutely. so good. Absolutely. Yeah, I think Silas is taking notes and Adam is just having fun helping out chat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's more than one way to be an enabler. Exactly. It's not just encouraging uh, Neb to take risks. <laughs> it's also enabling chat. Mm -hmm. It's just getting more stories out of Robin to find out what, what she has been. Mm-hmm. So when do you think you add Talosaurus to the list then of wild shapes? Well, well first I gotta see it. Or you could just draw it. What did we talk about? Just draw That's it. That's true. That's true. Just You'll turn into like it. a cartoon drawing of an animal. <laughs> but With googly happen. eyes. I mean, she heard enough of the, the snake and the tail story from you and Feruza that the whole idea of if I if I do this wrong, I might turn into a creature without a head is in her mind. So how do you draw a Talosaurus? Because obviously it's got to have a, a tail, multiple tails, many tails, but you still need a mouth and eyes. Where do you put the mouth and eyes? <laughs> Robin, you know, Robin, you know all about anatomy and things. Where do I put the things that make it so that I'm alive when I turn into this? <laughs> And then she'll try it. Yeah. <laughs> this is a sound strat. Absolutely. Nothing could go wrong this way. <laughs> I appreciate Neb's eternal confidence in that truth. You know, she's she's always been a little optimistic and she's super excited to finally have something that draws her and is making her um excited and want to do something. But I think that moment at the bottom of the mine where it became very obvious that this isn't just five strangers on a train who ended up being pulled into this thing. We were chosen. That's given her a level of, it's not confidence. It might be overconfidence. I don't know. It's given her a level of, I'm supposed to be here. And so I should trust my instincts that she probably shouldn't have. You know, it's, it's like, it's exactly what Hope was talking about. It's, it's Lauren knows the consequences of these actions and I'm okay with it. It's bringing us to terrific story places. It's a fantastic plot accelerant. And sometimes you just have to push the big flashy button on the airlock. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Someone's got to do it. Yep. Someone's got to do so, it. And someone's got to that... push that plot forward. Yep. <laughs> Love it. Or else you just stand there looking at the blinking and beeping and flashing and <laughs> blinking and beeping and flashing. <laughs> Who could blame you? <laughs> Push the button. I am Groot. Mm -hmm. It worked perfectly. And besides, Robin will be able to mend whatever we break with our recklessness, right? <laughs> right? Whatever. Absolutely. Anything. She'll definitely, she'll definitely try. No, Sometimes I take that's that back. Robin will. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Robin's got it. Neb's going to be just fine. And we're going to see all of that exactly as we prophesy 
next week because that about does it for us. So y'all don't forget to tune in here at Demi Plane RPG next week for the continuation of Children of Verte and the magical befriending of apparently Barry, the very friendly octopus. Thank you both so much. Uh, real quick, can you tell the good people where they can find you? Hope you go first. Oh, okay. Hi, you can follow me on Twitter at the Hoop Lavelle. And also, I am dungeon mastering a show on Wednesday nights on the That's How We Roll Twitch channel from 6 to 8 p.m. PT. Check it out. We're on episode five, so you can catch up really quick. And if you can't catch up, just jump in because it's, it's fun no matter what. And you absolutely need to watch the most recent episode. If you're unsure <laughs> about if this is the show for you, watch the most recent episode. Just, just jump right in because it's oh. indescribably amazing. Just be prepared for feels. That's why. That's why. <laughs> that like that's why. Oh. Oh wait, it's my turn. Hi, I'm Lauren Irvin. <laughs> you can find me on the socials. I was too busy hyping up hope, and that's all that matters. Uh, you can find me on the socials as Oba Lauren, um, and hopefully you'll find me next week being the octopus whisperer. <laughs> Here's hoping. So thank you again so much, and remember everyone. Check your diving computers for depth on a regular basis. But until next time, we're going off the air tie.